Information from the Ghana Statistical Service reveals that Ghana's exchange rate situation has undergone a series of fluctuations of volatilities ever since we entered into the Economic Recovery Program in 1983. That is not to say that the Economic Recovery Program and the Structural Adjustment Program has done us more harm than good. But you know every economic activity has its own pros and cons. Today the subject matter is the exchange rate situation in Ghana, or perhaps the depreciation of the Ghana CD against other major trading currencies. I'll also talk about the need for the government to pay critical attention to Ghanaian ingenuity like the technological works of Apostle Dr. Kodo Safo and other Ghanaians who have distinguished themselves to have great potentials. Now sometimes I wonder whether the management of the economy is entrusted into the hands of economists or politicians. If not, then why should two economists have conflicting perspectives about a solution to a particular problem? When certain solutions are so fundamental, perhaps for political expediency. Now, a lot of Ghanaians tend to misconstrue the definition of devaluation of a currency and depreciation of a currency. Now, when we talk about devaluation of a currency, it refers to a deliberate policy or a deliberate attempt by the government to reduce the value of a local currency in relation to the currencies of other countries. And when we talk about depreciation of a currency, it refers to the fall in the external value of our domestic currency in relation to the currencies of other countries. In other words, when more units of our domestic currency are needed to purchase lesser units of foreign currency, then there is depreciation of a currency. Now, the Central Bank of Ghana, most of the times, come out with expansionary monetary policy, or what we normally refer to as quantitative easing to counteract the free fall of the Ghana city against other mutual aid currencies. But this policy sometimes tends to be counterproductive and aggressive. Why am I saying this? Somewhere in 2015, under the able leadership of the then governor of the Central Bank of Ghana, Dr. Henry Kofi Wampa, a whooping amount of $20 million was injected into the Ghanaian economy just to show up the free fall of the city. Though we were able to achieve this objective, we also what happened. We nearly went into crisis just because of the liquidity situation in the country. Today, Kabuna e Japan is going to give you practical measures or practical solutions to counteract the free fall of the Ghana city against other major trading currencies. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, there is the need to restructure our economy towards changing it from its current over-reliance on imports by embarking on massive industrialization and also revamping the manufacturing sector to be able to produce more of the goods we import, especially consumer goods. I'd like to borrow a statement made by the former finance minister, Dr. Uh, Mr. Setekwe. Ghanaians have a strong taste, or Ghanaians have insatiable taste for foreign products. It is quite clear that the demand for foreign products is fairly inelastic. Just because of the negative perception that Ghanaian or locally made products are inferior. Ladies and gentlemen, until we change this perception of ours, we cannot realize the objectives we intend to achieve. So there's the need to pay critical attention to our manufacturing industry, specifically the import substitution industry, so that we can be able to patronize some of the goods we normally import. This is a very good step. Secondly, de-dollarization of our economy. It is very pathetic and sad when you hear that most of the transactions done domestically are quoted in foreign currencies. For instance, if you want to pursue further education at a good school like Ashes University, you have to convert all your domestic currency into foreign currency. It puts pressure on our local currency. And that is one of the main reasons for the free fall of the Ghana city. So we should de-dollarize our economy. Let's do every transaction in our domestic currency. We shall achieve the objective we intend to achieve. Now, let's pay critical attention to this particular issue. 
Apostle Dr. Kodo Safo, the impeccable man of God who does his work with optimum precision, has distinguished himself to be one of the great Ghanaians who are endowed with great potentials. He manufactures cars and other equipment. But why is it that the government is not paying critical attention to the technological works of this man? There's a saying that the day our life ends is the day we become unconcerned about matters that concerns us. I'm challenging the government to create the enabling environment for the technological works of Apostle Dr. Koji Safo to thrive. Now, a lot of Ghanaians always pose this question that how sustainable is the work of this man of God? If you, don't, if you do not recognize the good works or if you do not recognize what we have, how can it be sustainable? So let's recognize the good works of Apostle Dr. Koji Safo and I think we can be able to achieve our anticipated economic benefits. Now, when you go to most of our exhibition centers, you see a lot of Ghanaians who have displayed very good artifacts. But what is the support? Nothing. They don't have enabling environments. The enabling environments have not been created to support them. So at the same time, the government of Ghana pays critical attention to these particular sectors for us to achieve all the benefits or all anticipated economic benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I draw the curtains for this particular presentation. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.